What's up, beautiful people? We have a very special guest today, a multimedia artist with a bachelor's degree in computer science and a master's in visual effects and animation. He is also the creator of Turtle Dust Media. Turtle Dust Media is a black owned and operated studio that focuses on developing and creating black illustrated and animated content. Their mission is to increase black representation on screen and behind the scenes in the animation field. They, they do this through education, advocacy, and the application of industry standard animation tools and techniques. Um, we welcome Mr. Nick Butler. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for uh, coming again, um, brother. So um, tell me a little bit about your, your background and what got you into um, animation. Yeah, so I was a military brat, um, and we moved around a lot. And the one thing I could take with me wherever we went was drawing. Um, it gave me the ability to, like, you know, imagine the things that I wanted, um, you know, be the places I wanted to be, and just generally express myself in a way that was portable. Uh, I could draw in church. I could draw at school. I could draw at home. And so I just drew all the time. And um, after years of, of just doing it as out of habit, I realized like it could be a career. Mm -hmm. um, but it took, um, I took a couple of, you know, detours along the way, um, joined the military uh, where I actually got to use it a little bit. Uh, after leaving the military, studied computer science because it was the practical thing to do. Um, and then while studying there, I realized that computers were everywhere and especially in the creative field. Um, so um, I joined an organization called CityGraph, uh, which is a large computer graphics convention. And it just opened this entire world of how computers and art are integrated and connected. And ever since then, I've been pursuing, um, pursuing it, you know understanding the tools, understanding the techniques, and um, trying to make art with computers. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> being an artist, you literally create something out of nothing. Um, what are some projects that you've worked on or you're working on now that you are really proud of? And um, how long does it take for um, the idea to translate into its final form? Yeah, so um, the latest project that I'm really proud of is um, a project I did with an organization called um, Committee for Children. They are a large, I believe they're a nonprofit organization out of Seattle. <clears throat> and uh, they have an anti-bullying campaign that they do each year. Um, it's a web comic. They release five weeks of comics um, on bullying prevention, uh, how to deal with bullying. And the main character in that comic is a, is a young black man or black kid. And uh, the artist who was working on it prior wasn't really hitting the look. Uh, the character was really ambiguous at the time, but it was important that the character uh, represents someone of African-American uh, heritage. And so they brought me on to redesign it and so I had an opportunity to like sort of put my mouth, um, my, my skill where my mouth is and then I want to show more black faces. And so I got to redesign the character and redesign the comic. And um, from the feedback from the organization and the folks who participated in it, it had a much greater reach because of that, the new look and feel. Um, so I, I've had a lot of projects, but that one I think uh, is right where I want to be, where my art not only um, is expressive and, and creative, but also trying to make change and make the world a better place. Um, as far as timeline, it really depends um, on uh, the project, how well it's organized, uh, <laughs> the budget ultimately, and um, <clears throat> How you know where where I am with the idea? I've had projects. I have projects that I've been working on for 10, 15 years. Um, where you know I'm sketching ideas, I'm writing the story, 
and trying to uh, get it together, uh, figure out where it's going, figure out whether or not I should invest time in it, into it. And then there are other projects that, you know, um, that I do in a weekend. Uh, they're not, of course, of the same quality, uh, but sometimes you just have these ideas in your head uh, that you have to get out. And when the muse hits you, uh, you just have to run with it. Uh, so um, I've, I've had times where I could sit down over the weekend and produce a little two minute uh, animated piece uh, that I put up uh, on the web. Okay. Um, I'm from a generation, well, I'm, I'm a 90s kid, right? And there wasn't really a lot of representation of like uh, black male and female um, on any animated series. If it was, it was like, um, the common Black Lightning or Black Falcon or, you know, anything with Black and some type of electrical powers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, have you, uh, I think we're very, very fortunate, you know, to be in this age where we have internet and access to people outside of, you know, um, our circles. And we have things like Black Sands Media and um, a lot of, uh, a lot of focus on creating our own narratives. Um, have you seen a lot of change um, with people being able to create their own narratives within the last couple of years? Yes, it has been, um, it's been, so 2017, I saw this animation of uh, what looked like a Pharaoh-like character uh, battling another character who had like a lion sidekick. And I was like, what is this? This is, mm -hmm. this is cool. It's got this anime feel um, and, and it's, it's really neat. Um, and, you know, but I kind of like, you know, shrugged it off, you know, like that's somebody creating something um, on their own. And, you know, this is the only time I see it is it'll pop up every once in a while on these very, um, these black centered, uh, comic Facebook pages, right, that mm -hmm. I follow. Um, I come to find out it was Black Sands, and he was doing his thing, doing his comics. Uh, he produced this uh, 2D animation that wasn't getting a lot of traction and, and wasn't getting a lot of attention. Um, but when the pandemic hit, it seemed like it was, it was he, had, he had arrived. Mm -hmm. um, and so with his uh, funding and the completion of his Kickstarter, I saw either I was introduced to it because I, I believe it was always there, right? Um, the the current of uh, black media, you know, uh, black driven comics, black driven animation, it was always there. It just didn't have a platform. Mm -hmm. And so, um, what what I've seen, what I've stumbled into because I'm not going to say it, it just spontaneously came out came out of nowhere but what I've stumbled into in the last what was it, three years has been this slew of of underground media um, black owned black produced content that was running in very uh, small circles but now that people are able to leverage Instagram, leverage Facebook, um, TikTok is a huge one. Um, there's, there's, for me personally, there's been an explosion in my experience. Um, there are a lot of uh, creators who are starting to band together. Cause mm -hmm. you know, I think there was a lot of like independent creation. Um, a lot of, I'm doing my thing over here. You're doing your thing over there. Mm -hmm. But now we're starting to see them coalesce. There's been comic crossovers between some of these creators. Um, uh, and and it's just it's been an explosion. Um, there's it's quite a few people I follow now. Um, there's um, oh man, I'm drawing a blank on the names. I can tell you the characters. Mm -hmm. um, Tuske Tuskegee Airs was one that I was introduced to. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Ace Blade, um, I think it's Lumberjacks, and all of these comics. They're they're they're, they're building their own thing. And, and there's, we're starting to see a lot more. And I think as 
with Black Saiyan's recent success on Shark Tank and that huge exposure, mm -hmm. we're going to see a, a bigger acceleration of that. And I'm hoping that it stays um, sort of Black driven and Black owned in that, um, yes, they're able to get the financing, but they also are able to maintain the control over it. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. that's the, the the part that concerns me most is that sometimes the paycheck um, means that you give away a lot of the control, and by mm -hmm. giving away a mm -hmm. lot of the control means that then um, you know we, you're no longer making decisions, and we end up right where we were. Um, but I'm seeing a lot of artists, excuse me, find ways to uh, finance it themselves, raise the capital. Uh, get the budgets, uh, hire the animators uh, in order to maintain that control. And I think in the future, we're looking at instead of it being, hey, the studio bought us out and now they're going to mm -hmm. be making uh, Black Sands, for instance. Black Sands is going to be partnering with Disney, Sony mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, 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 in collaboration instead of as the financier or the, the producer. I definitely agree. Um... One of my earliest memories of actually seeing a, um, a animation that excited me was Static Shock back in the early 2000s. Um, some of us may know the, the Mackie story and his uh, creation of his comic book line and icons, and then he sold some of it to DC and they were holding on to Static Shock. There's a whole story behind that, but um, just being able to create your own narrative when is important for us, you know, um, especially African American brown people. Um, for example, Black Sands, they are they have stories based in Egypt, but we have like Mali, the, the great empire of Mali, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um like throughout whole throughout the whole continent of Africa, we can have our own Game of Thrones uh <laughs> type of uh, <laughs> comics, yeah. you know what I mean? Just having the research there. And I think that's very empowering for us as creators and not us, not only us as creators, but uh, for the youth to look at and be like, wow, our story didn't start with slavery. Our story didn't start with, you know, us being in America in chains. Like we have a, a long history, a rich history of mathematicians, scientists, teachers, kings, queens, like yeah. there's, there's, there's story there. Um, how important is representation to for you and what you create? It's it's huge, and there. So that's the main. When, where to begin this story? So I was programming computers because that was what my degree was in, mm. and I said this doesn't make any sense. This isn't working for me. This doesn't feel right. I, I'm a creative person. I need to be creative. So I essentially quit my job and moved to Los Angeles um, to, to do art full time. Um, and I spent every day for about a year drawing and painting mm -hmm. to improve my skills, to better understand storytelling with visual storytelling. Um, and one day I was having a conversation with my dad um, about my work and I was showing my, him my work, my progress. And his question was, why don't you draw black people? Mm. And it never dawned on me that I wasn't drawing black people. It never dawned on me that none of my characters were black, none of the things that I drew were black. And so um, since then, I have been on a mission uh, to sort of of self uh, introspection as well as uh, cultural exploration, uh, learning more about my family and my heritage, um, which I've found is deep and in, 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 uh, very rich. Um, and, and so now it's like, man, I got personal family stories that are pretty impactful and pretty uh, amazing. That I feel need to be out there. I, I think right now, the representation that we're seeing in um, the bigger media for the bigger media companies is good, but it represents a very small slice mm -hmm. of the diaspora, mm -hmm. right? And I and I love what they're doing at Black Sands uh, with the history, 
but I would love to see modern history. I, you know, in the last year and a half, I've been finding out that there were all these black scientists, like you're mm-hmm. saying, performers, uh, inventors, and that a number of the things that our country is foundationally built on, the technologies, the innovation, the capitalism, um, were driven by black folks mm-hmm. and and all of it's been minimized. So for me, I you know, I want to uh, elevate those stories. I want to um, show more than than sort of the um, the the thin slice that's being represented on on uh, in media now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a beautiful slice, you know, and, and I love the the culture that they are they're highlighting, and and sometimes they hit very universally black things, but sometimes it's pretty it's pretty focused on folks who grew up in the urban centers, right? So you know, LA, New York, um, Miami, you know, those major cities. Mm-hmm. But there are folks who were growing up in little towns like Georgetown, South Carolina, you know, mm-hmm. that need that need some representation. Um, and so uh, that's that's my goal to to to. I think if I start with my personal stories and my personal family, um, that I can I can, you know, uh, you know, make the conversation bigger make the conversation right. more colorful right um and it's important to provide stories that's not always based in trauma you know a lot of our narratives that we uh, are are privy to or that we see on the media is based in some crazy events or happenstance that not all black people go through you know um there's some some black kids who grew up in like uh little towns that's not (laughs) quote unquote crime infested or you know like even though i grew up in a a neighborhood that did pretty much the opposite of of what i wanted to do was like watch cartoons or uh, watch movies animes and stuff like that all black people are not monolithic you know what i mean like we don't have we don't always seek the, the the traumatic stories to to entertain us you know we need just stories that love stories you know uh Mm -hmm. uh uh, funny comedies just stuff like that to um just to just to watch and and just you know it's just like it's just like eating food you know what i mean like what you can eat fast food that's going to tear your body up or you can have like a real meal a a well-balanced meal that that will feed you and your soul you know what i mean that's is that that is extremely important in my opinion. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> what I'm seeing right now, um, yeah, I, on TikTok, which I don't know if you're on TikTok, but it, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> it's addicting. Uh, TikTok, there is a current of folks who are essentially loudly saying we're done with uh, the, the trauma trauma porn is what they they call it right yes yes uh, and the question is what who's who are they making this stuff for because we're done with it right like i mean yes it was it happened to us um and and we've acknowledged it but where our strength is what we did to get through it mm-hmm. and so um all the beautiful things that have come out from that and even the things that we've done uh, with that being in the backdrop is it, it needs to be celebrated and so for me, I, I'm focused very much um, on a slightly, slight, slightly younger audience than I've seen for most of the content. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm focused on, um, uh, I'd say, tweens, you know, uh, ten to thirteen, mm-hmm. and and I want it to be, I want to <clears throat> tell stories that are very um, uplifting. And you know, in order for a story to be interesting, there needs to be some conflict, right? So I'm of not, course, not of trying course. to give people perfect lives mm-hmm. uh, and say that, that that you know, oh, everything's hunky dory, life is great. But it's you know, you introduce ideas and concepts that um, that, that are authentic and that are real, and um, and it doesn't always have to be the 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 current um, the current tropes. Mm. Um, you know, the, my father was military, and so his job as a uh, as a soldier often took him away in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like, especially growing up, you know, I think in the '80s during the Cold War, 
um, you know, when, you know, there were always these <laughs> alerts and it was like, all right, we're shipping out because of something, even if it was a, a practice thing. So my stories kind of focus around that sort of that relationship with, with, with my black father mm -hmm. uh, who, you know, was dealing with a lot of things outside of the home that are related to some of the things that they're talking about. But um, I really wanted to focus in on that, that, that relationship there, uh, the, the, the internal sort of suburban black family. <laughs> mm -hmm. is, is that, you know, like blackish, I think hit it, uh, hit it a little bit too. Uh, but uh, I, I, that's, that's was my experience. And I know there are interesting stories there and I want to tell them. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I want to just introduce something different, see if we could do it, do something different. Um, and, you know, just expand it beyond what, what we're seeing. So that's important. That's extremely important. Um, we as a community are progressing in this country, you know, it's a lot, a lot more people with college degrees and, and, um, jobs that can afford us to live in these suburban communities you know um there's still a lot that doesn't have that opportunity but those it's kind of like it's kind of like we're we belong we don't belong over here and we don't belong over here it's like we're right in the middle you know what I mean? It's like the the, the cream and the Oreo, if, if, if yeah. you will. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's 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 an extremely important, I don't want to say niche, but um it's extremely important to highlight us, these people in the in this um community, because it's always the extreme on this side or the extreme on this side and nothing in between. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a couple authors. So even Kendi um, wrote a book, uh, the anti-racist book. And one of the things that really stuck with me in there was uh, what the question of whether or not integration was really the best thing. Mm. Um, and, um, you know, and I'm not saying that we should have maintained segregation in any means, mm -hmm. um, but the opportunity to build our own um, uh, in the way we wanted to build it has not really been afforded to mm -hmm. the Black community. I just found out about this place called Soul City, North Carolina. Um, it was like it was, Black Wall Street. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, well, in Soul City was in the 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a city that was going to um, be primarily Black, no exclusion, but, you know, it was, it was going to be primarily Black. The, it was a dream uh, project of, a, I think, a Black... Uh, government official in North Carolina and he was going to build a city and 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 create jobs and, and places to live and and it was just going to be a center of black progress um, in in North Carolina which was a uh, historically pretty uh, repressive state mm -hmm. and uh, the powers that be got wind of it and just crushed it you know just like uh, said that it, it, it was going to have all these problems and that they were embezzling and, you know, and, you know, and it's never often this um, overt effort um, to destroy things, but it's like um, the, the power was taken away. So with these creative projects, the ability to create a platform, create a place to speak of our own, Mm -hmm. um, because when you set up, when you write your own comic and you're the one publishing it and you're the one taking it uh, all the way through the process, no one can tell you what to do with that. And it's not until you, you know, and that's the piece where I keep coming back about giving away the power, because if you are able to do it all yourself and maintain that power, then you can tell those stories and build that, that thing, that unobstructed um thing and <laughs> I, know, I know i'm saying thing mm -hmm. because for me it this is really has for me grown beyond just making comics and cartoons mm -hmm. um it's 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 for me really a matter of of pushing an idea that i think for a little while 
we're going to need some some very protected spaces that allow black voices to flourish and 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 for me comics and cartoons are one of those places that will speak to a younger generation uh to sort of to sort of build that idea and build that 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 goal um and so it, that, I, it's an underlying current, you know, I'm not, I don't want to be too direct with it in my, yeah. in my work, yeah. but it's definitely something I want to address. It's like, you know, yeah, but, and, and it's happening. It's happening. It'll happen even without me, but uh, I definitely want to be a part of that in the comic animation space. Yeah. Uh, in what I call the kind of an independent black animation market. Um, where you know we're not all driving for Oscars, we're not all driving for Grammys, we're not all driving for these established uh, status uh, milestones, mm -hmm. but simply driving to tell the stories and represent the culture and and represent the diaspora and give the give kids uh, something to aspire to and look up to, um, because you know an Oscar is nice, but it's a nice in certain circles. Mm -hmm. Right, it's mm -hmm. for certain. Um, I guess <laughs> almost like it's it's good for certain. It, it's like an admissions ticket. Right? Yeah, you win it, and now you're in the this certain crowd. But you know there are a lot of black Oscar winners who, after they won the Oscar, things slowed down. Things yeah. kind of got the brakes put on, and it's like, you know, I you know I I think there's we've got to <laughs> i know that it's supposed to be a creative talk here but yeah. you know for me, yeah. I, I think that's a big driving piece of my creativity is is um is that that mission so um you spoke on a few things but um what um really affected me was the the fact that you said the idea you know the idea quote unquote, is extremely important. Everything we see around us from this microphone I'm talking to, this computer that we're talking to each other, you're halfway across the United States on the other side and I'm on this side, like all of this was created from an idea. When you create animations, comics, it all starts from the mind. And the idea is important because ideas can outlive our lifetime and continue on with future generations. So if you plant an extremely good, tangible idea in your generation and is um, relatable and effective for, you know, a little kid that's had this, has the same ideals as you and want to be an animator like you and want to create like you, they can build upon that. It's like you create that foundation that the that future generations can build on top of and you know create that 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 powerhouse where we don't have to ask for acceptance in these spaces you know mm -hmm. what i mean we have our own space you know we we have i want to say like we have spaces like soul train awards or you know what i mean just just mm -hmm. just like we we create our own avenues where we don't have to look outside of ourselves for acceptance or you know um accolades that they matter, but in the grand grand scheme of things, do they really matter? Yeah, yeah, it, and and it's. I think uh, companies like Black Sands have laid some foundational um, stones for mm -hmm. folks to build on. Um, you know, he his his. If you follow social media. He's always talking about, um, you know, his his sort of aversion to the to being pulled in. You know, they, mm -hmm. they you know a couple of times he said they came to me and they offered to buy it, and I and I said no because uh, you know there's you know they they made these amazing black centric movies in like the seventies and they were huge. Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. nothing for generations until we got Black Panther, right? And so, mm -hmm. you know, it, it can be tempting um, to, the money can be tempting, the opportunity can be tempting, but uh, like I said earlier, um, 
maintaining that control for now, get, get the foundation there. And then the payoff is much bigger and much higher and much more grounded. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think that the next generation of animators, uh, young animators, young black animators, young animators in general um, are going to be able to have avenues to tell their stories. Because, mm -hmm. you know, movements like this open the doors for everyone. Yeah. Right? Like, uh, you know, the things that are being established now and the, and the, um, the, the paths that are being laid for Black creators are going to open the doors and, and create paths for other creators and other communities that feel like their voices aren't being heard. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's changing things. And, you know, uh, I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm excited to see uh, mm -hmm. who else comes up um, behind, but, uh, you know, with the tools and the techniques and the, and the, uh, innovators that the next generation has to follow they're going to be doing some some amazing stuff yeah and we can we can definitely see remnants of you know uh mackie with milestone you know what i mean he he opened a lot of our eyes to the possibility to create our own um narratives and ideas and and and, and complex characters you know what i mean that's not the same uh, side characters that they usually put in, in, in bigger productions. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, me and my wife joke about <laughs> this all the time that, um, a lot of superheroes that we see black superheroes have like electric power, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> which is, which is crazy to me is there's so many different avenues and so many things that you can create upon instead of just giving, uh, the same, black character the same power you know what i mean and and the same background story it's just like the same thing over and over and over again yeah and there's a tendency in media and in in the creative world that like um if it worked well in screenplay writing there's this idea of give me something the same but different mm -hmm. right and so this, I, and, and I think that has sort of corrupted the way people go about creating things. It's like, oh, well, uh, you know, Static Shock was so huge. Black Not Lightning was so pivotal. You know, why not have, uh, you know, build on this electric power thing? Mm -hmm. I've heard some people do some pretty academic deep dives into why um, there's a large amount of Black characters with electrical power. But, you know, I... I think the superhero genre in general is pretty saturated. Yeah. So it's hard to find something if you stay in that in that lane. So I, I think you know with Black Sands exploring things like uh, like African history, um, they're going to be able to tap into new places and 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 avoid that electrical trope. Mm -hmm. But in comics, they you know people tend to stick with the superheroes and somehow we always end up in electricity. I don't, you know, I don't, it's a cool power. It's a cool power. But, you know, I, you know, there, there are others out there. Um, and, uh, you know, we just got to see folks, uh, you know, try something different. Somebody come with a different, you know, different perspective. You know? Absolutely. So, I was thinking about the, um, um, Nord, Nordic pantheon of their gods, you know, Odin and, and Thor. And I'm just mm -hmm. thinking like all the gods that people in the continent of, of Africa uh, worshiped and, and, and put on this pedestal. It's like, I'm pretty sure that we can make, create our own pantheon of, of, of these uh, gods, like West African o Oshun uh, religion, you know, there, mm -hmm. if you look, if you if you really think about it, I don't want to get too conspiracy theorists, but if you really think about it, um, every god that's in the Oshun religion, which is a few hundred thousand years older than Nordic religion, um, the Nordics kind of like repeated a lot of those gods. <laughs> you know what I mean? A lot of that pantheon is the, is the same. So when I was um, when I first started painting. I had this wild idea. I love Greek mythology. Mm -hmm. And I 
us like you know the, the stories that you read about Zeus were crazy you know like you know all the you know all the things that those Greek gods got into was just um you know some of it you know very very interesting stories mm -hmm. um, and so I, I I got really into it and I was like oh well I'm gonna take these Greek stories and I'm gonna repaint them you know you walk into into museums you see all these beautiful representations of the Greek mythological characters all of them are european looking right right and it's like um so i'm gonna flip it i'm gonna do these exact same stories except i'm gonna make them all the characters black and african mm -hmm. so you know the, the story of zeus uh the story of um uh, uh Lita and the bull you know um you know the minotaur you know all those stories i'm just gonna flip it and so i started doing research uh to 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 learn more about them uh and i thought i was making all this up like oh you're making that character black and you know and and like there's this i thought i was imagining all this mythology but it turns out mm -hmm. that almost all of those stories mm -hmm. were inherited you know what i mean because human they like to push the idea that human history is all of these spontaneously created separate things right 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 but it's all, hey, you know, when we were unable to write and, and connect over the internet like we are, you know, somebody would meet somebody on the road to somewhere and tell them a story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That person would be like, oh my goodness. And if they, that person was a good storyteller, they'd take it to the next place and they'd tell that same story. And they would put a spin on it that was made people in their area relate to it more. And so we've been spinning each other's stories across the globe since we could stand up and walk on our two feet. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so this idea that Nordic mythology, um, uh, even Chinese mythology is anyway separated from African mythology is, is something created in the last few hundred years, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It all started from those stories where the people from the beginning, uh, which they're saying is Africa, mm -hmm. were telling the stories to the people who told them to the people there, who traded with the people who, who wandered afar. And, you know, so it, it's like we're all cousins telling the same, it's telling our shared stories. And, uh, you know, Thor is just as African as, uh, as, um, Anasazi is Chinese, right? Like, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> and, you, and if there's a there's a book by um oh man, what is his name? It's a hero with a thousand faces is the book, but he gets really way too in-depth about uh human stories and how they're all related and they're all built on one another. And and so you can take those stories, jumble them up, uh, make them what you want them to be, and it's all the, the human human story mm -hmm. and if you that's why if you you know <laughs> that movie turning red just came out and there was a reviewer who's like i can't relate to this right mm -hmm. like this story isn't about me um and everybody really got on the dude and was like yeah dude you know that's insensitive and and whatnot and it's like every story if told right hits the human experience yeah, and if you tap into that human experience, where the character is black, white, or brown, that's why we connect. We want to see more brown. I want to see more brown people. I want to see more Asian people. I want to see more diverse people on in the screen. But we still want good story uh, with that because we want everybody to come along on the journey. And um, and so, yeah, um, it's a it's 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 a wild. That's why storytelling is so powerful. It's always been a driving current mm -hmm. in human existence, and um, and if, if 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 anything, it's a tool to bring us all together and give us that common that common togetherness. <laughs> I feel you. It's it's important. Before we mm -hmm. had movies and and even written texts or even language, um, 
people told stories on, on, on cave, over cave paintings. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Or a little bit after that, in order for you to um, understand what was going on in the southern part of Afri Africa up north, people had to, you know, like you said, meet each other and tell those stories. You know, stories are extremely important for our growth and our human development. I think that's why we are where we are now, because we told us, told each other these stories and shared stories, you know, mm -hmm. um, just sharing a story with someone, it not only it, is it relatable, but it brings you closer to understanding someone who might not be from your neighborhood, from, you know, your, your inner circles. It, it makes you a little bit more relatable with that person, you know, because mm -hmm. you, you get that background, you get that knowledge, you get that perspective from that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's huge. I, it, yeah, I, I, I've always wanted to tell, to tell the story, which seems a little too meta, about storytelling and um, how it, it, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's so foundational. Um, you know what? I got a quick idea for a future animation. I want at least like 5%, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> creating a story about the, the first person who told the first story mm -hmm. and how that story like branched out like a, a, a flame. You know what I mean? Like one story that's relatable to all humankind. I don't know what story that is, but everyone has like a similar experience with that story later on down the line. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just yeah. my idea. That's just my idea. Yeah, you know, I always imagine um, it, it being somewhere way back when at like the, and I, I always wanted to tell a story that was kind of like at the dawn of the human of humanity. Yeah. Um, like before we were fully the thing we are now mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and have, you know, have, have, you know, explain that idea of how fundamentally important storytelling was. I've seen people try to do it. Uh, I don't think anybody's ever really hit it, but it because it's such a, a difficult thing to 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 capture in mm -hmm. such a small thing like a like a movie or even a book. Um, but yeah, in that I I've got some that put some really beautiful pictures in my head. This idea of like it also being kind of represented as like this flame, right? Like mm -hmm. um, that sort of. Uh, sets, sets, you know, and I think sorry, I'm telling man. you, let's go, let's go into business, brother. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, or, or even how stories evolve, like when we first um, left the trees or whatever, right? And mm -hmm. there were still like um, lions or, or saber tooth tigers that we had to fight off. And let's say one person got in an altercation with a saber tooth tiger and they made it home. And they had to create that story of, hey, bro, don't go down there. It's a few tigers, <laughs> you know what I mean? That'll mm -hmm. te tear your head off. So just, just a person trying to figure out how to create that story to warn the other people in the tribe not to go down there because, you know, it's danger, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then how stories de develop from that, you know what I mean? Because in my mind, I think, the first stories of just of our existence is, hey, go over there, there's food. Don't go over there, there's danger. Go over there, that it's safe. Like, you know what I mean? Just from that into the stories that we tell today is is extremely amazing, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and, and the thing is, is that if, if somebody sits you down, they say, hey, now you don't wanna go over there because that's bad for you. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to go over there because, or you want to go over there because that's where all the food is. You're not going to remember that. Mm -hmm. But the person's like, let me tell you about the time. Mm -hmm. We were down there mm -hmm. in the deepest, darkest part of what we call our lands. And we were going through the trees and we heard something, you know what I mean? That's going to stick with you, Absolutely. right? And that's Absolutely. Stick with the kids and they're going to, oh man, my, my dad was telling me. And that's how I always imagined it too. Like then the, the thing that always comes to mind for me is because I have four kids is when 
a, a dad at that time was asked, why does the sky uh, brighten and then this noise come after it, right? Well, mm-hmm. Why does the thunder happen? Boom. Mm-hmm. It's like, what is that? Explain that to me. You have no idea what it is. Um, you got to now give that child enough information to keep them safe, keep them, you know, so they're not constantly afraid of it and they're willing to go out into the world. So you, you make up a story, you know, mm-hmm. and you tell a mm-hmm. story of why the lightning comes and maybe you make a story about a person in the sky or, or an angry God or something. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, and, and, and that, that, that information over time, you know, some of the things that have stuck with us in the stories that we told to explain the world have been great for humankind. Some of them, not so much. Yeah. Some of them need to kind of let go. But um, I, I really, I, that's a, a, a very uh, vivid picture in my head. Is the, the the story is that image of a parent explaining to a young youngling, you know what 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 the world is mm-hmm. and how to navigate mm-hmm. it you know you know mm-hmm. little red riding hood uh three little pigs all those stories that uh, have been with us for the longest time and that's exactly what they were and now they've gotten more complex uh sometimes when they get it wrong in the media today it's because they're just trying to make a buck yeah. right so, and you can feel those stories right like this this has got something to it doesn't really feel like enough how many fast and furious do we need <laughs> <laughs> buy cars buy right. cars buy cars right like right. And, you know and it's like uh you know they, they they put that family piece in there i i think i watched the first two and i think tokyo drift was the last last one i watched mm-hmm. um and i was kind of into it because it, it had that that underlying thing but you know it's they they've they commercialized it just like they do most things and um which sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Um, but, uh, you know, story is, is so huge and so important. And, and, and I, I, I love it. It's, 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 a, it's something I can do whether I had a million dollars mm. or zero dollars. Nothing can stop me from telling stories, whether it's on paper or with my words. And so it's a power that everybody has and you don't have to have any means to be able to leverage that tool. And that's what makes it so powerful and so beautiful. I love that. Um, some people may not know about established black animators. Uh, for example, Floyd Norman, um, one of the, well, he was the first black animator for Disney or um, Montique Ruffin, um, very recently she worked on um, the animated movie Soul. Um, do you have any black animators that like top tier for you, whether it be film or comics or, you know, any genre, do you have any, um, any ones that, that inspire you to keep going? Yeah, quite a few. Uh, and some of them I know personally, um, I, I do, a, a black animation matters, um, uh, TikTok series where each week, I highlight a uh, black animation creator, uh, black animated owned studio. Um, so I've been really, it's been an opportunity for me to really dig into the community. Um, and some of the folks uh, that I have been introduced to, um, uh, for instance, um, there's a, <clears throat> there's quite a few. <laughs> um, there's. Well, Matthew Cherry, uh, who recently, um, not recently, but won an Oscar for his short hair love. I seen that. That was a beautiful yeah. story. Yeah. Um, he uh, met him briefly uh, when I was down at uh, animation convention uh, down in Los Angeles. Um, is now connected with another uh, Black animator, um, let's see. <laughs> Uh, Chaz Bottoms, he uh, has a uh, an animation studio um, called, uh, I believe it's CBA Studios, mm-hmm. um, and and this so watching these young uh, black animators 
come up and do their thing really inspired me. Uh, and so I have made it a mission to, um, for, and it might even be a selfish mission to collect and know who they are mm -hmm. and speak their praises. Um, I've done, <clears throat> I think like six or seven uh, different, what I call BAM or Black Animation Matters um, TikTok videos mm -hmm. where I highlight individual artists. Um, there's Shauna Mills. She's a storyboard artist who works for some of the major studios and she's got her own productions. Uh, I highlighted um, Jim FX, uh, which is run by Everett uh, and Dixie Annie McBain out of Trinidad and Tobago. Mm. Um, they're doing an amazing, amazing stuff. A Black Women Animate is a studio run by a Black woman named Taylor Shaw um, out of, um, I'm not sure where they're based. I think they might be even, you know, animators across the globe. Uh, but they're focused on Black women animate or Black women animators. And the entire studio is, is, is Black women. Uh, Lion Forge, um, which is, uh, um, was the studio behind the production of Hair Love with Matthew Cherry, mm -hmm. um, it, uh, run by, um, I can't draw a blank on his name, but it's a Black-owned studio. Um, and then even in Japan, um, there's a black home studio um, run by Arthel uh, Ilsom, and uh, they did some work for um, The Weeknd. They did a music video for The Weeknd. Yeah. So there's, I, you know, every week I'm trying to increase my knowledge of black animators because um, <laughs> it seems like they're coming out of the woodwork now, like, oh my gosh, did you know? But they, they've always been there, I guess, sort of like silently working away, mm -hmm. um, not, you know, craving for the spotlight. But, you know, I think now's the time to say like, hey, look, look, look at all these amazing Black folks behind the scenes of animation, uh, making animation happen. Uh, and uh, you got to check them out. So, um, yeah, on my site, uh, turtledustmedia.com, if you go to the uh, BAM link, uh, Black Animation Matters, I'm, I'm trying to get as many names up there as I can, uh, mm -hmm. folks I know, folks who are at a distance. But uh, there's, there's so many, and they're all inspiring for me. I love that. I love that um, we all need to, you know, support each other. You know, that's, that's extremely important. We all should bring each other up and 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 you know highlight these wonderful creators on every platform um i think the one in japan didn't he create um what was it a small netflix series about uh the first black samurai yasuke or something like that um i think that was actually um lashawn thomas okay okay um, different different artists um and i don't know if he, he was actually korea in korea for a number of years um he's also did the black dynamite series and um i love that series that was my favorite yeah. <laughs> ever black dynamite i love it yeah love it. it was I, I i had to hunt it down but i really i really liked it it's uh, some great commentary on uh like black exploitation and mm -hmm. films and that sort of thing um but yeah he's you know, I haven't heard much from him um, in the last few years, but he did his own series called Can Cannon Busters, mm -hmm. which he uh, wrote and, and, and had produced. Um, but yeah, he was he was one of the folks involved with that the Yasuke um, film. I haven't watched it yet. Um, but... um, the writing could use some work. Uh, <laughs> it was, Yasuke was a little OP at times. But mm -hmm. I'm, just for me personally, I'm kind of like a history buff and I wanted to really know about his history and how he was there and, and, and how he survived it as the only black man, black African in, <laughs> in, in Japan, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But um, it was kind of all over the place, but the animation was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I heard it, it got into, you know, cause I thought it would, would have been like a historical, um, sort of reality based but i hear like you know all kinds of wild powers started coming out yeah um, yeah i heard mixed reviews about it um i'm excited 
that it's now out there in the world um, because I'm like, just like everything else, um, animation like music, people take it and remix it and redo it and redux it. And I've seen a lot of people with their own takes on mm. uh, the Alaska story. And so it'd be interesting to see what other folks, other folks can, uh, can also do with it. Um, just got a few more questions for you. And um, mm -hmm. after that, uh, I, we often play a little game called this or that with our guests. If you're mm -hmm. okay with that, would you like to play? Sure, okay. definitely. Cool. Um, what is one series that you can always go back to that you would like never get tired of? Um, whether it be comics, uh, animation, cartoon, whatever, like what is one series that you can always turn on and maybe it like brings you back to childhood where you can eat some, 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 um, some cereal, you know what I mean? Like, what is that mm -hmm. one series? Yeah. So it's actually not animated and it's actually kind of cliche, but I am a huge Star Wars fan, like, mm -hmm. like, like beyond the movies. Um, I watch the cartoons that have blown up lately. Um, any content that's like the books and I'm just, I just dig into it. So whenever I'm at home and I'm, uh, I'm making dinner or cooking uh, in the kitchen, I put on something Star Wars. If I need just to like relax myself, center myself, it's, it's Star Wars. I listen to the audiobooks on the way to work. Um, I, I don't know why. Um, I always enjoyed it when I was younger. It was very hard to come by it when we only had VHS and Mm -hmm. and whatnot um but now that um disney has it and they're just putting out all of this content around the um th that idea uh it's just i've just been drawn into it to the point of like trying to understand the politics of it and, uh, <laughs> you know the like the, the really deep part of it it's, mm -hmm. it's that's that's my jam um if if i could do a podcast I don't know if I'm to a point where I could, um, you know, do a podcast or anything about it. But if if I did have time, I would I would really want to dig into the the eccentricities of Star Wars and its universe and the expanding universe, which they're doing a great job of just I think blowing it up. So. Yeah, I I love the Star Wars um, ecosystem. You know, um. um their stories are extremely rich and it seems like they're not afraid to evolve. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I love star Wars, but I'm more of a star Trek fan, like Picard, like <laughs> I could, I could, I could play like my, my wife gets mad at me, but I can watch a whole two or three series of, of no matter what season, just like the whole thing through of star Trek from mm -hmm. front to back all day long for like the next two weeks and wouldn't get tired of it. Yeah. It's funny because I was raised in a Star Trek household. <laughs> my dad was much more of a Trekkie than a uh, than a Star Wars fan. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, as a rebellious youth, I uh, <laughs> took up the mantle, rejected the Star No, I enjoy Star Trek and, and um, there's a this show Prodigy. What, what I'm starting to see there's this animated show called Prodigy that's based in the Star Trek um, universe. Mm -hmm. And it feels like Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And there's a series I've been listening to um, uh, based around a character called Thrawn in Star Wars that feels like Star Trek, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Star Trek has always been, I felt like more sort of like about the, the problem solving uh, intergalactic issues and very much sort of like this collaborative hive mind of the ship mm -hmm, right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and and figuring out problems whereas star wars was more sort of like individual based uh around you know these these people who had these individual um goals that intersected uh but it wasn't so much um uh like a hive mind yeah sense yeah uh, i'm finding that the two are kind of exploring each other's territory um in 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 recent uh uh iterations so that star trek prodigy to me felt very star warsy 
Mm-hmm. This uh, this Thrawn series feels very Star Trekky. So it's um not to go on a tangent, just a uh, just a simple fact of you know deep space deep space nine, John mm-hmm. Cisco, a black mm-hmm. man, the captain. Yeah. You know what I mean? A single mm-hmm. black father. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Just, just, just controlling every aspect of you know this, 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 this space station. That just blew my mind. Like the first time yeah. I seen that, I'm like, this, this. Who gave this black man so much power? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> and yeah. futuristically, the way that that we're headed is just like more realistic in my head. Like I could mm-hmm. see that within the next. 90 to 100 years you know what I mean like mm-hmm. it'll be the norm that's that's just why I like it so much because it's a little bit more relatable to me I mean I like lightsabers but mm-hmm. give me a phaser all day and it's over yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know that that is one of Star Wars's I think things that lacks um is its representation mm. I was super excited with Force Awakens when they introduced the uh, Finn character, mm-hmm. uh, but totally, uh, I don't know. They, they felt like they diminished the character throughout that trilogy. Uh, so I'm hoping that they correct it. Uh, they figure out some way of, uh, you know, c- centering a black character somewhere in Star Wars. But you know, I've had always had this idea of um, of doing a series around a young Lando. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mm-hmm. you know and like you know almost like a like a grade school age lando um is something i always imagine so maybe i'm hoping that some i catch someone's eye with my other things and they're like hey <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have you ever considered doing star wars i've seen i've seen some comic artists who are drawing star wars comics and making star wars comics um and i'm like i, I can draw that well maybe i should Mm-hmm. Apply to office, you know, I don't know, but it, it would. One of my dreams would be to tell a Star Wars story, and uh, and so that's that's one of the things I aspire to. But I definitely need to go back and rewatch Deep Space Nine. I remember watching it with my dad. Um, Dude, it's the yeah. stories, just just I don't know. It's just empowering, you know, seeing mm-hmm. a black man, a, like a father figure, you know what mm-hmm. I mean, on screen controlling and 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 just the way he carried himself very powerful you know what i mean um but uh last question what would you tell a young nick butler um that's looking to go into a career of animation like what out of everything that you've learned thus far what advice would you give your younger self Uh, wow. Finish. (laughs) Finish (laughs) things. Um, that I, you could probably even tell from the way I sort of go about forming ideas when I speak, I'm all over the place sometimes. Mm. And I, I like to start projects more than finish them Mm -hmm. and so um i would i would have told my younger self those are all great ideas but let's just focus on this one for now Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. we'll get to the other ones you know because if you put the time and love into this one then it'll be easier to accomplish that next one Mm -hmm. Uh, so I probably would have told him to to focus a little bit more. Yeah, I love that. I can definitely uh I learned from that myself. Um what helped me was setting up like routines for myself, you know. Um if I had if I do things a certain way, whenever I start a project or conceptualize a project, I put those same um those same um uh, rules within that project so it's complete it's just for example i wake up in the morning i work out i make lunch for everyone um get my uh, son ready for school take him to school like i have to do things it's kind of ocd when i talk about it out loud but i have to do things like by bullet points you know what i mean like I, i keep a notebook with me i write down what i need to do 
like I suffer from like procrastination. <laughs> like if I don't write anything down and go by what I wrote written down, nothing is going to get done. <laughs> yeah. Like I will sit all day and watch Deep Space Nine and 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 yeah. won't care. <laughs> but um, yeah, just I, I love that that advice, you know, and I'm pretty sure our listeners or anyone that's in that, you know, same position can learn from that. Just go ahead and finish, you know, whatever you started, you know, and yeah. put that love and admiration into it. Yeah. And the, uh, to build on what you were saying, the key to that finishing that I've only recently developed, I believe, is the idea of being very structured mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. um, the I'd say the tool that serves me most in uh, accomplishing things is Google Docs. Mm -hmm. um, if I need, if I feel like I need to accomplish uh, something over any span of time in my life, I create a to-do document, 20, 2022's to-dos, and I just list them out. And, uh, and you know, the, the great part is, is like, I put it there, I'm not holding myself to it to, so that I suffer from like guilt of not accomplishing things, mm -hmm. but, but just having it written down uh, takes me a step further. And then, okay, well, here are the things I'm actually going to do. Then I pull those out and I put another list underneath that. And so I have these documents that I maintain throughout the year um, that I can pull up on my phone or on my computer. And I look at it and it, it tells me what I need to do. But it also essentially for me tells me that like, hey, you can chill. Like you did all those things. Right. You, know, you got those all done. You don't right. have to do anything today. Mm -hmm. And so you can take that time and not feel you could be out with your kids at the playground to be present versus like, oh man, what should I be doing? I should probably be back at the house, you know, getting that thing ready so I can submit it to that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, it allows me to not only get things done, but also let me, lets me know when I can chill. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Chilling is very important, especially yeah. for artists, man. We get strung mm -hmm. out and it all goes downhill. Um, so <laughs> This or that, this game is uh, very simple. I ask you a question with two possible answers. You can only choose one, and the whole world depends on these answers. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready to start? Sure. Pancakes or waffles? Ooh. <laughs> I'm going to go with pancakes because that's the first thing that came to my mind, although uh, I could really appreciate a good waffle. Yeah, like the nice big fluffy ones with the divots that, that carry the syrup in little pockets. Yeah, yeah I do <laughs> both. Of, I would have to, I don't mean, I'm bragging. I do pancakes and waffles really well. I'm the pancake and waffle maker of our household. <laughs> and uh, Belgium waffles, uh, pancakes, crepes, I do it all. <laughs> So that's why it's hard for me, but pancakes, pancakes. Okay, okay, not bad, not bad. Um, puppies or kittens? Puppies. Why? Um, so I was never, my, my family never had cats. Mm -hmm. The only, I have recently been introduced to the world of cats, so I'm learning to love them. But, but puppies are, and dogs in general, I feel are much more affectionate and I like that direct contact. Cats are a little too passive for me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I like, I like the, the, I like the vibe of dogs. They're just much more into you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Cats uh, walk around the place like they own the joint. Mm -hmm. um, who would win in a fight? Black lightning or static shock? Oh, man. So I've been following an artist called Nicholas Draper Ivy. He's mm -hmm. the one currently illustrating Black Lightning. I mean, not Black Lightning, uh, Static Shock. Mm -hmm. And so I've been seeing some of his powers. Um, I'm going to have to say Static. Really? Mm -hmm. You're going to pick um, youth over experience? Yeah, you know, because I, I, so I don't know a whole lot about black lightning mm -hmm. but i saw a, a, a issue or like a little blurb from static shock where his arm got blown off 
and he was able to reconnect it using his power. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so it was like, okay, if he can do that, then what, I mean, how would you stop him? So, um, I, I don't know. I, from what I know of the two characters, I'm going to go with static, um, because I don't know a whole lot about black lightning. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure if you, um, like anime, but I'm going to, um, just, just, just random. Um, have you seen one punch? Yes. Uh, Satama or let's say Superman. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a tough one. Goodness. So I say both of them survive and the rest of the universe suffers. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was watching One Punch, um, re-watching it actually, uh, and there's a scene where he's knocked up to the moon mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and leaves a divot, yeah. jumping back down to the planet. And then they've never really capped what Superman's capabilities are. So if, this or that, right? Okay. <laughs> I knew I was going to stump you with this one, man. It's, yeah. it's like, it's so... I'm, I'm going to have to go Superman. Mm. Um, no, actually. Okay. I, I, I'm going to have to go Satama mm -hmm. because Superman has kryptonite. And I don't think there is an equivalent for uh, One Punch uh, Satama. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't think he has like a jewel or, you know, as long as he's running his mile and doing his push ups, right? His 100 push ups, 100 sit ups. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. From, right? <laughs> so it's like, you know, Superman, you throw some kryptonite at him or obliterate the sun, yeah. game over. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's a very acceptable answer. Um, yeah, I, I, I can see that. I can see that. Because we don't know, you know, one punch is, uh, um, um, we don't know what can harm him yet, you know, mm -hmm. if yeah. any, if anything. But um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time out to speak with me today. Um, I learned a lot of gems. Um, I really appreciate what you're doing for yourself and as well as other animators. Um, I think it's very important. And um, do you have any um, like links or um, social media plugs that people can look at and uh, how can people follow you? Yeah, uh, if you go to turtledustmedia.com, that's going to take you um, to just about uh, all my other uh, social platforms. Um, my TikTok is where I'm most active. Um, I also want to mention that um, I'm currently running a program that you can find on my website uh, called BAE, uh, Black Animation Entrepreneurs. And I am uh, gonna be working with four uh, animators who aspire to start their own studios um, and it's sort of giving them as much of my insight as well as connecting them with um, other animators so that we can all work towards uh, developing sort of an independent uh, black animation community. Mm -hmm. um, that I think has about eight or nine more days uh, open for applicants. So if uh, someone is looking to get paid to learn how to start their own business, um, I think they should hit me up, turtledustmedia.com. And if you, if you get there, you can find me anywhere. Perfect, perfect. Um, we're going to plug everything in the descriptions. Um, so once everything is done and edited, I will let you know. I will send you a link. I will, um, any promotional thing I will send you. And um, once again, I really appreciate you taking the time. No, oh, no, thank you, Philip. Much appreciated. No, perfect. No problem. Love is love. Peace, man. Thank you.